What's up everybody, happy holidays. It's that time of year where I tend to reflect and look back and do a little bit of a year end review. And in that spirit of looking back, I wanted to create a video on the top tactics, strategies and wisdom that I wish that I knew whenever I first started playing pickleball. Whether you're just starting out or whether you're an advanced player, there's gonna be something in this video that's gonna help you improve your game right now. So let's get into it. Welcome to High Five Pickleball, where we help you play better, win more, and make the most of your time on the court. My name is Adam Richards, and in this video, it's my goal to give you some tips that can transform your game today. There are some pickleball tips and concepts that are just evergreen. You've probably heard them. Hit the ball at your opponent's feet. Always keep your paddle up in ready position when you're at the kitchen. Keep your eye on the ball. These are the classics. Instead, for this video, I wanted to share some tips that could help you succeed immediately, but also set you up for success over the long run. Coming in at tip number one, don't rush. All right, this may sound simplistic, but rushing on the court often gets players in trouble. Maybe you're in a rush to serve, so you hit it into the net. Maybe you're in a rush to hit a third shot, so you creep up after your serve and get pushed back off balance popping up the ball. Maybe you're in a rush to get to the kitchen, so you crash the transition zone only to hit a pop-up and get smacked with the ball. There are many reasons why you shouldn't rush your shots, but for the sake of this video, here is the biggest. When you rush, you're more susceptible to unforced errors. In other words, you lose control. Let's take a look at a scenario where I'm in a hurry to get from the baseline to the net and I rush my shot. I want you to take a look and make a note of all the things that are happening here, and then I'll point them out afterward. Okay, so this is obviously for dramatic effect, but what do you see? When we rush, we lose focus of our mechanics, we lose control, and we commit unforced errors. I'm not setting my feet here. I'm running through the ball. I'm making awkward contact outside of my optimal contact zone, and I'm even taking my eyes off the ball. Instead, when you're calm and not rushing your shots, you have the time and focus to perform a solid sequence of mechanics that help you hit a good shot. For example, I set my feet before swinging. I'm balanced. I watch the ball all the way through. I wait until the ball is at its peak and then I make contact in my optimal contact zone. This cadence of mechanics repeated over and over again is a building block to consistency. So if you're struggling with consistency or if you're struggling with getting to the net, consider slowing down. When you avoid rushing, you can focus on the important things like your contact point and the sequence of mechanics I just mentioned. Getting those mechanics right will lead to better accuracy, consistency, and control. Before we dive into the next tip, I've got a gift for you and it's completely free and just a click away. Introducing the path to better pickleball. This is a step-by-step -step path through 10 videos and a downloadable skills guide. This isn't just another tutorial, it's designed to improve your game in 30 days or less. Inside, you'll discover proven strategies that have already helped thousands of players dramatically improve their game. The best part is, it's free and it's easy to gain access. Just click the link in the description and you're in. Tip number two, choose high percentage shots. Choosing high percentage shots is like picking the right tool from a toolbox. You wouldn't choose a screwdriver to drive a nail. In the same way a craftsman selects the right tool for the job at hand, you must choose the most effective shot for the situation. But how can you know which shots have the highest percentage of being successful? Here are a few examples to consider. Example number one, the red zone. When you're at the net and you attack a ball in the red zone, this is a low percentage shot. This is the area between your feet and your knees. This is a low percentage shot because in order to attack these balls and to clear the net, you have to hit up on the ball. And if you're hitting up and adding pace, and your opponent sees it coming, they will likely let it go out. Example number two, the yellow zone. 
Now, let's say that you get a ball that bounces a little high in your yellow zone. This means this ball is between your knees and your navel. Should you attack down on the ball? If you can successfully attack this ball 8 times out of 10 or 80% without hitting the ball into the net or hitting it out, then I would say yes, go for it. But if not, I would say reset the ball and wait for a ball that you can attack successfully 80% of the time. Example number three, placement. The last way to think about high percentage shots is your placement of the ball. Where are you hitting the ball to? No matter where you are on the court, where you're hitting the ball to has a certain percentage of success. For example, if you're here and you get a pop-up, which of the two options have the highest percentage? I would argue that this is the highest percentage shot for a few reasons. Well, there's obviously more court, but the net is also shorter by two inches here. And if you were to miss hit it, you would have a lot more margin for error and you'd have a lot more court to work with. Every shot will be more nuanced based on your skill set, who you're playing, and what is most strategic. But generally speaking, where there's more court, there's more margin for error and more percentage for success. Tip number three. Transition in the transition zone. When I first started out, I spent a lot of time attacking balls that were at my feet in the transition zone to try and hit my way out of trouble. At the time, I didn't know that in order to take control of the point, I had to get to the net. But I learned an easier way. Instead of attacking balls at your feet and trying to hit your way out of the situation, it's much easier and faster to hit an unattackable reset shot that lands in your opponent's kitchen. When your shot is unattackable, they must return a neutral shot, and this gives you the time and opportunity to get to the kitchen. Here's why it's a bad idea to always attack. If you're in the transition zone and you're attacking balls at your feet, you're hitting up on those balls, and your opponent, who is at the net, has time to react, and they have better position to hit down on the ball with more of your court as a target. With that being said, if your opponent can't handle pace, then use pace. But ultimately, your goal should be to neutralize your opponent, transition, and advance to the kitchen. Tip number four, keep it compact. When it comes to your swing in pickleball, less is more. It may feel like you need to take a big backswing on shots, but this often gets players in trouble because those big unnecessary swings can throw off your timing and result in a poor contact point and even an error. To help demonstrate this, we're going to look at a pro point, slow it down, and look at their swing path for multiple shots. And then I'll share some tips at the end to help connect it to your game. To start it off, we've got the serve. Notice here that Collins stops at his shoulder on his backswing, and he's not lifting the paddle any higher. Next is a ground stroke where you see the swing start further down, this is a nice, smooth, compact swing here. And right after is a punch volley. Notice here just how little of a swing there is in this punch or this block. This is a spot where many players feel like they have to take a big swing, but really this is just keeping your paddle out front, making contact, and probably no more than maybe six to 12 inches of movement with your paddle to make an effective shot here. Next is a really nice topspin dink here. He applies a lot of topspin, but it's still very minimal in his paddle movement. You'll also notice here what Wilson is setting up for this point in just a second. Next, Colin returns with a volley. Still, it's very compact and minimal, and he takes the ball out of the air. And like I was saying, Wilson gets what he's looking for with that topspin dink. He lets the ball bounce to its peak and speeds it up down the middle. This is incredible point construction here, but look how little movement he shows in the speed up with his paddle. There's a few reasons here. One is you, you want to disguise this shot. You don't want your opponent seeing what's coming, but the other is you don't really need a big backswing. He's generating speed with his wrist here, but even that movement of his wrist is very hard to see and it's very minimal. So what are the big takeaways? One is less is more. 
You don't need a lot of paddle movement to execute a shot that is well-paced and well-placed. Any extra backswing can lead to errors. Another is always ready. Since the court is small, the ball can come back to you very quickly. So short, compact swings can get you back into a ready position with your paddle up, ready to receive any shots from your opponents. Another is smooth. Rarely do you see jerky movements or start and stop motions in this clip. Their movements are nice and smooth, and this smoothness helps maximize the accuracy, consistency, and control. The only caveat to this is when you get an overhead, in those moments that may require a full swing to put it away, but the majority of the shots that you will see on a pickleball court will only require short and compact swings. As a thank you for sticking through the entire video, I wanted to share a quick bonus tip for you, and it's actually two tips in one. Through a lot of trial and error, I have learned that one of the fastest ways to progress your game is by combining two things. First, it's by playing people who are better than you at pickleball. Players who are better than you can be like flashlights to your game. They can shine light on the areas that need the most improvement. So when you do that, take note during those games. Sure, you may lose, but those losses should be seen as lessons. The next thing is if you can then find ways to drill around those areas of improvement and get quality reps in, your game can improve drastically. And by quality reps, I mean focused, intentional, and high intensity. By combining this newfound illumination with quality drilling, you can reach a higher potential much faster. So what's one thing that you wish someone had told you when you were just starting out? Share that in the comments below. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be something from this video. And you never know, your comment may help change somebody's game in the process. If you enjoyed this content or learned something new, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another update from High Five Pickleball. Thanks for watching.